Hi, this is uh, my first lecture on uh, polynomial regression model and uh, here is the content of uh, this uh, topic. Uh, so, we will be talking on uh, polynomial models in one variables and uh, orthogonal polynomials, uh, piecewise polynomial fitting and also we will be talking about uh, uh, polynomial models in uh, two or more variables. Uh, well, so uh, polynomial models are used in uh, regression analysis uh, when the response variable is uh, uh, nonlinear. That means, uh, given a set of data x i y i for i equal to 1 to n, uh, first uh, you prepare the scatter plot and the, when the scatter plot indicates uh, that the relationship between uh, the response variable and the regress regressor variable is nonlinear, uh, then we need to go for uh, polynomial model. Well, so here y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus epsilon is uh, called second order model in one variable. Okay. So, in general kth order polynomial in one variable is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon. So, now if you put say for example, x you set x j equal to x to the power of j, then this can be rewritten as y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta k x k plus epsilon. So, this one is uh, nothing but uh, a multiple linear regression model involving uh, k regressors. So, then kth order polynomial model in one variable becomes a multiple linear regression model with k regressors x 1, x 2, x k. Okay, so, there is I mean uh, fitting uh, a kth order polynomial is same as uh, 
fitting a multiple linear regression model involving uh, k regressors. But uh, there are several uh, important consideration while fitting a multiple uh, linear regression model. Uh, the first one is uh, what would be the order of the polynomial, because we are talking about fitting a kth order polynomial. Uh, so, we need to decide about the order of the polynomial. So, here the suggestion is that we would like to keep the order of the polynomial as low as uh, possible. So, when the response uh, variable is nonlinear, that means when the scatter plot indicates that uh, there is a nonlinear relationship between the response and the regressor variable, uh, first you try for some transformation to make the model linear. If that fails, then you can you go for a second order polynomial. Okay. Uh, so, we do not uh, recommend uh, a polynomial fitting of very higher degree. Usually, uh, the order of the polynomial is less than or equal to 2. So, the next issue is you know uh, that is called the model uh, building strategy. So, the first one was the order of the order of the polynomial. And here uh, we sort of uh, decided that you know uh, it is recommended that k is usually less than or equal to 2. So, second one, so this is the order of the polynomial k. And the second one is uh, model building strategy. Model building strategy. Okay. So this is also, I mean, uh, regarding the degree of the polynomial. Uh, sorry, the order of the polynomial. Uh, this is called uh, forward. selection. So, what this uh, forward selection suggests that you start with the linear model, start with linear model. That means, you start with y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. Okay? And then you go for the second order polynomial, say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus epsilon. And after fitting this model, the second order model, you need to test the significant of the highest order term that is beta 2 here. If beta 2 is significant, then you go for a third order model say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta 3 x s cube plus epsilon. But if you see that beta 2 is not significant, then you can stop here. So, you will stop in the second order model. So, this is what the algorithm say in general. Uh, so, uh, ultimately it is uh, uh, successively fit model of increasing order. until the t test for the highest order 
term is non significant. So, this is what the uh, model building strategy is and uh, next uh, another consideration that is called the uh, yield conditioning. Okay. So, here as the order of the polynomial increases the x prime x matrix becomes ill conditioned. So, what is the meaning of this? Uh, it become ill conditions uh, is that uh, the x prime x matrix it is uh, becomes near singular. That means, uh, that is same as x prime x inverse calculation becomes inaccurate okay because we need to compute this one so uh, uh, because uh, the estimation of regression coefficient beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y so we need to compute this inverse but as the order of the polynomial increases this uh, x prime x matrix uh, becomes near singular. So, the computation of inverse uh, becomes inaccurate. Okay. So, the specific case if the values of x are limited to a narrow range there can be significant ill conditions in conditioning problem in column of x. Uh, let me give uh, an example of this one. Uh, you must have understood that uh, we are talking about the polynomial y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square and beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon. So, here is the x mat uh, the coefficient matrix x is the first column is 1, the second column is corresponds to x values the third column is corresponds to x square values like this right so if you have say the x value say very uh, uh, are limited to a narrow range suppose the x values are like 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 and 0 0.13 these are anyway 1 then the x square value is 0 0.0121, 0 0.0144, 0 
one six nine. So here you can see. Well, let me write. Then the x square column. This is approximately equal to point zero one time x column. So uh, here you can see there is a near uh, dependency between these two columns. So, that means the matrix become a near singular. Okay. So, that is why it says that if the values of x are limited to a narrow range, uh, if the x values are from the narrow range, there could be significant yield conditioning problem in the column of x. Okay. And uh, how to remove this uh, yield conditioning problem is that you know uh, one way to do is that uh, centering the data may remove ill conditioning. That means, uh, we, we fit the model say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x minus x bar plus beta 2 x minus x bar whole square plus epsilon. You fit this model, where the data are centered instead of instead of y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus epsilon. So, this is you know one way to uh, to remove uh, ill conditioning pro pro problem. Okay. So, next uh, we will talk about uh, orthogonal polynomial. Suppose we wish to fit the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon and here you uh, have observed that the x the coefficient matrix x is sort of 1 x x square up to x to the power of k. Okay. So, now if we wish to add another term like beta k plus 1 x to the power of k plus 1, then we must recompute x prime x inverse, because once you add this term in the polynomial, you have to add one more column x to the power of k plus 1. So, you have to recompute uh, the new x prime x inverse and also estimates of lower order parameters 
beta naught hat beta 1 hat beta k hat this thing will change once you add one higher order term in the polynomial model. So, how to uh, that means, you have suppose you start with the second order model and then you compute beta naught, beta 1, beta 2. Now, if you want to add say uh, third order term like beta 3 x to the power of 3 in the model, then again you have to recompute uh, uh, x prime x inverse and uh, the lower order uh, parameters also. So, how to avoid uh, this uh, problem? So, one way to do this is to uh, use uh, uh, orthogonal polynomial. So, here So, if we construct polynomials p naught x. So, p naught x is a polynomial of uh, degree z or 0 p 1 x of order 1 p k x with the property that they are orthogonal polynomial. That means, summation p r x i into say p s x i is equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to n for r is not equal to s and r s they are from 1 to up to k. So, if you can find polynomial like this you know uh, um, they are called orthogonal polynomial, then we can we can rewrite the model as uh, y i equal to alpha naught p naught x i plus alpha 1 p 1 x. So, this is the orthogonal polynomial of order or degree 1 plus alpha k p k x i. So, we are replacing x by uh, p 1 x and x to the power of k by p k x i. Okay. So, that means, uh, it, this is a uh, polynomial orthogonal polynomial of uh, degree or order k plus epsilon i for i equal to 1 to n. So, where p r x i is a rth order orthogonal polynomial. So, instead of fitting the model uh, alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha k x to the power of k plus epsilon, we are fitting a model p naught sorry alpha naught p naught x i 
alpha 1 p 1 x i plus alpha k p k x i and the, these are uh, the equivalent problem and these are uh, orthogonal polynomial. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, before uh, we uh, you know learn how to compute or how to estimate this uh, regression coefficients, um, let me give example of orthogonal polynomial to make this uh, I mean to get better idea about these polynomials orthogonal polynomials. Okay. So, here is an example of orthogonal polynomial. Okay, so, uh, here the condition is that uh, the x values are x values are uh, equally spaced. Okay. So, here the, the uh, 0th order polynomial p naught x i is equal to 1, p 1 x i is equal to lambda 1 x i minus x bar by d. I will explain you know, why they are orthogonal polynomial p 2 x i is equal to lambda 2 x i minus x bar by d minus n square minus 1 by 12. Uh, this is of order 2. So, this is the second order orthogonal polynomial and then p 3 x i equal to lambda 3 x i minus x bar by d to the power of 3 minus x i minus x bar by d into 3 n square minus 7 by 12 and let me write one more p 4 x i is equal to uh, x i minus x bar by d to the power of 4 minus x i minus x bar by d square 3 n square minus 13 by 14 plus 3 n square minus 1 n square minus 9 by 562. I am sorry uh, you do not need to uh, remember all these things. So, given a problem you will be you will be given the orthogonal polynomials you know you do not need to memorize this thing lambda 4. Uh, let me define uh, some uh, terms here uh, I have used where where d is uh, is the spacing between between the levels of x and lambda j are chosen so that the polynomial will have integer values. Okay. Uh, these are the orthogonal polynomials. Let me just uh, give uh, what I mean by d and uh, lambda 1 say for p 1. 
suppose you are given a data uh, with n equal to say 8, you are given 8 observations and uh, you want to find uh, the orthogonal polynomials for that observation and it does not matter what is what are the values of x because uh, because you you need to you know that this x values are equally spaced so you can uh, you can say the x values are just like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 because there are 8 observations so here the d is uh, the spacing between the levels of x so here d is equal to uh, in this example d is equal to 1 and the x bar is of course for for this particular case x bar is equal to uh, 4.5 you can check that then what is p1 x1 p1 x1 is uh, 1 minus 4.5 by 1 into lambda 1. Okay, so, this is minus 3.5 and it says that lambda are chosen so that the polynomial will have integer, integer value. So, to make it integer value you take lambda 1 is equal to 2. So, 2 into this is uh, minus 7 right. So, similarly if you put if you put 2 here uh, x equal to 2 you will get minus 5. So, this one this is what my p 1 x okay. and if you put 3 here you will get minus 3 if you put 4 here then it is minus 1 if you put 5 then it is 1 3 5 7. So, this is how you have to uh, for different n you have you will have different uh, orthogonal the values will be different I mean the same orthogonal polynomial of course. So, you can compute p 2 x p 3 x all these things. So, you know what is d uh, looking at the value of this you can decide about lambda 2 right. So, uh, my aim is not to talk more about this orthogonal polynomial what I uh, wanted to do is that I had a model like I started with the model y equal to beta naught plus uh, beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon. And then there is some problem some uh, some considerations with this model. Uh, instead of fitting this model I wanted to I want to fit the model y equal to alpha naught p naught x plus alpha 2 p 2 x sorry p 1 sorry plus alpha 1 p 1 x plus alpha 2 p 2 x plus alpha k p k x plus epsilon. So, I want to fit this I, mean, I, want, I want to find the value of alpha naught alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k. So, how do I do that? I, I this is uh, a multiple linear regression model I write down what is my x the coefficient matrix is 1 1 1 Okay, the first column uh, and the second column is because p naught x is equal to 1 uh, for all x. Now, p 1 x, so this is my p 1 x 1, the first observation, p 1 x 2 for the second observation, and p 1 x n for the nth observation. And similarly, my third column would be p 
p 2 x 1 p 2 x 2 and then p 2 x n and my kth column that is p k x 1 p k x 2 and p k x n. Okay. So, this is my uh, x matrix. Now, now we will realize the advantage of this uh, orthogonal polynomials and th these are orthogonal polynomials. right? So, then what is x prime x? What is x prime x? x prime x is n 0 0 0 and then the second row is see this is nothing but my p naught x that is p naught x 1 p naught x 2 p naught x n. So, this column into this column is and since they are orthogonal that is why this term is equal to 0 and uh, uh, the second diagonal element is p 1 x i square of course, 1 to n and all other elements. So, it is become a diagonal uh, matrix right. And the last one is p k x i square 1 to n. So, this is my x prime x matrix which is a diagonal matrix and I can write down this one as uh, as in matrix form y equal to x alpha plus epsilon. So, alpha hat, so the least square estimate of alpha hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. You know x prime x, you know of course, y, y is nothing but y 1, y 2, y n. Uh, so, you can compute alpha hat. Uh, so, let me write down so, what is alpha naught hat? Alpha naught hat is first you compute x prime y. So, x prime y that is summation y, summation y into x prime x inverse that means 1 by n. So, that is nothing but y bar and similarly for other parameters say alpha j hat is equal to you can check that you take the jth column here and then that is p j x i into y i and here the jth diagonal element 1 by uh, just p j square x i. I am sure you understand this. So, this is for j equal to 1 to up to k. So, this is how you can uh, estimate the regression coefficients. Now, here the advantage is that uh, you, you, you should uh, observe this one. Now, if you add say one more term here say alpha k plus 1 p k x plus 1. Uh, these things does not change. So, you do not need to recompute x prime x and the value of the lower parameters also does not uh, also they do not uh, change. Okay. So, this is the advantage of using orthogonal polynomial. Now, uh, let me write down uh, the uh, ANOVA table for, for, for this model. 
here uh, for this fit uh, what is the residual sum of square. residual sum of square that is uh, called S S residual. Okay, so, S S residual we know that this is nothing but E i square, E i is the ith residual for, um, for i equal to 1 to n and this one is again nothing but y i observed value by minus the estimated value whole square 1 to n. Now, we can write this one in terms of matrix form y minus y hat prime into y minus y hat. Right? So, this one is same as y prime y minus y prime x alpha hat. So, this you can check you know why this one is equal to this from your from uh, the second uh, topic uh, on multiple linear regression. Okay, so, you talked about this one before. Now, y prime y is nothing but y i square. And then uh, you first compute y prime x and uh, that is uh, nothing but I mean you can check that the whole thing is uh, y i p j x i that is the jth element in x prime y rho, it is a rho now yep. yeah. and then why you multiply with this vector alpha hat this become alpha j hat sum over j equal to 0 to it is not difficult to check this one, you just write down the matrix and check this. Okay. Now, uh, this one is equal to from i equal to 1 to n, uh, i equal to 1 to n y i square. Now, the 0 th for j equal to 0, I will separate it out that is uh, alpha. 0 hat and for j equal to 0 p 0 is 1. So, this this one is nothing but summation y i and I will keep the other terms from j equal to 1 to k here alpha j hat minus y i p j x i. Right. Now, you know that this alpha naught hat alpha naught hat this is nothing but y bar then this one is summation y i square minus n y bar square minus j equal to 1 to k alpha j hat sum over this is i equal to 1 to n y i p j x i i equal to 1 to n. Now, you know that you know th th this thing is nothing but S S T. So, S S T minus j equal to 1 to k alpha j hat i equal to 1 to n y i p j x i. So, S S residual is equal to S S T minus something and uh, this one is nothing but S S regression. Right? So, uh, 
regression sum of square, we can write this is nothing but this 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 part, the second term is is SS regression. Okay. So the regression sum of square is equal to alpha j hat summation y i p j x i i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to k. Now, what I want to say here is that, so this is the total uh, I mean regression sum of square that is S s this one is nothing but S s regression. Now, what is S s regression due to the jth term that uh, the notation for that is S s regression due to the due to alpha j the jth term that uh, jth term is alpha j p j x i that is nothing but the j term here that is nothing but alpha j hat summation y i p j x i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. Similarly, for uh, for uh, S s regression due to alpha 1 is you just replace this j by 1. Uh, so, you will get S s regression due to every regression coefficient separately and uh, here it is very important that you know uh, and also useful that all sum of square for the coefficient say alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k, they are orthogonal and, and their value, their values do not depend on the order of the polynomial. So, if you have uh, so 2 degree polynomial, then, uh, then the S s regression due to alpha 1 and the S s regression due to alpha 2 you have and now say you make this polynomial to say 5 degree polynomial then th there you will again have you know ss regression due to every regression coefficient alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha 4 and alpha 5 but this alpha 1 and alpha 2 they do, they don't change they remain the same even if you go for the higher model so this is in the beauty of uh, this uh, uh, orthogonal polynomial now uh, let me just uh, write down the anova table for this one so, ANOVA table ok. So, source degree of freedom sum of square m s and finally, f. So, the sources are uh, so, S s regression again S s regression due to alpha 1, S s regression due to alpha 2 and similarly S s regression due to uh, the kth term and you also have uh, the total variation in the response variable that is S s uh, sorry I should write just total uh, and the part which is not explained by this uh, regression model or these terms is called residual. Okay. Well, now total uh, degree of freedom 
uh, we know that S s total is is y i minus y bar whole square that is the variation in response variable and this has degree of freedom n minus 1 because of the constant that uh, they satisfy a constant that y i minus y bar is equal to 0. So, you know that. So, the degree of freedom is n minus 1. Now, alpha 1 has degree of freedom 1, alpha 2 1, I hope you understand all this thing. So, you have k coefficients and then the residual degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1. So, other way to explain this is that um, other way to explain this degree of freedom is that uh, there are n observations, so n residuals, but there are k plus 1, uh, uh, there are k, k plus 1 constraint on the residual because uh, there are k plus 1 uh, coefficients like including alpha 0, alpha 0, alpha 1 and alpha k. So, there will be k plus 1 constraint on residual. So, the residual degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1. Uh, so, this one is S s regression due to alpha 1, S s regression due to alpha 2, S s regression due to alpha k and you know all these things. So, you know what is this uh, S s regression alpha 1 that is nothing but uh, you put just uh, j equal to 1 here to get that. So, we know how to compute S s regression due to uh, the coefficients and uh, we know what is S s residual that is uh, S s t minus S s regression. So, that is called S s residual and of course, uh, the m s value are same as S s because the degree of freedom is equal uh, is uh, there 1. So, m s regression due to alpha 1 is same as S s regression due to alpha 1 and that is by 1. So, that is uh, same thing. Now, only the m s residual is equal to s s residual by n minus k minus 1. Okay. And the f value, suppose you want to test the significance uh, of say the highest order term alpha k. Uh, so, the test statistic for that is f equal to m s regression due to alpha k by m s residual right and this f follows f 1 n minus k minus 1. So, this is the uh, ANOVA table for this one. Now, uh, see uh, in model building strategy I told that you know you start from uh, lower order model say, uh, say first order model and then whether uh, you need second order model to test that you test the significance of alpha 2 at the highest order term. So, similarly here uh, the significance of of highest order term uh, to check that that is alpha k to check that you have to test the hypothesis alpha k equal to 0 against alpha k not equal to 0 and you know the test statistics f is equal to m s regression due to alpha k by m s residual and this follows f 1 n minus k minus 1 and hence the critical region is f greater than f alpha 1 n minus k minus 1. 
Okay. So, if the observed a f is greater than this tabulated a f, uh, then, uh, then we reject the null hypothesis that means, uh, the kth order term is significant. So, if the kth order term is significant, you, 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 you can consider the kth degree polynomial and then you have to check for k plus uh, 1 nth degree polynomial. Uh, and if you see the k plus 1 nth degree polynomial is not significant, then you stop there. Otherwise, if it is significant, again you have to go for the higher order polynomial. So, uh, in the next class, I will give an example to uh, illustrate this uh, orthogonal polynomial. Uh, today, we have to stop now. Thank you.